Welcome to Bass Habits episode number 73. Today we're going to talk about playing bass in Oasis. Oasis were an English rock band formed in Manchester in 1991. The group, led by brothers Noel and Liam Gallagher, achieved massive success in the mid-90s and continues to inspire to this day. Right off the bat, Oasis are not a bass-driven band. Not only the image, but also the music revolves around Noel's guitar and Liam's voice, while the rhythm section and the bass especially have a more marginal role. Nonetheless, the bass guitar has its function and what it does, or in this case doesn't do, give its contribution to the final craft and after all, Oasis are considered by many one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, so it's worth taking a look. Besides Liam and Noel, the original Oasis lineup, formerly known as The Rain, consisted also of rhythm guitarist Bonehead, drummer Tony McCarroll and Paul Francis McGuigan, widely known as Gwigsy, on bass. Under the guidance of Noel, the band began crafting a musical approach that relied on simplicity with Bonehead and McGuigan restricted to playing bar records and root bass notes. Oasis thus created a sound described as being so devoid of complexity that it came out sounding pretty much unstoppable. Stripped down musical approach is mainly due to two factors. One, Noel was primarily a songwriter rather than a guitar player, and probably the majority of his songs were composed on an acoustic guitar, using very simple chords and not too many articulated riffs. Two, all the other guys in the band were much younger than him and virtually unexperienced, so there was probably not much of an input from them. As a result, the songs are a super heavy version of a guy playing an acoustic guitar. The bass has a smile EQ with a mid-range cutout to get the percussive sound out of the way, working around and below the thick layers of guitars. To me, they're the ACDC of Britpop. Like in ACDC, there's not much room for the bass, but part of the heaviness that made them famous is also down to the fact that bass and drums are keeping it very simple. Bass player Gwitsi was mainly a Fender user, sporting a jazz bass and a Telecaster bass. As mentioned before, his style is pretty basic, but what he was really good at were thumpy and syncopated rhythms. On Wonderwall, bass and drums are what pushed the song together with a syncopated pattern. The contrast between the short and thumpy notes played by the bass and the open guitar chords creates the structure we all know. Leon's voice adds the magic. Cast No Shadow has a similar structure. Regarding his style, McGuigan said in 1995, when I first started I just played up and down the top string of the bass. Come to think of it, it's what I still do now. McGuigan briefly left the band in September 1995, citing nervous exhaustion. He was replaced by Scott McLeod, formerly of the Yayas. McLeod appeared in a music video for Wonder Wall and began a tour with the band of the United States. He quit after a show in Pittsburgh, which resulted in rhythm guitarist Bonehead playing bass for a while. Afterwards, McLeod contacted Noel, claiming he felt he had made the wrong decision. Noel replied, I think you have to, good luck signing on. To complete the tour, McGuigan was persuaded to return to the band and he would stick around until 1999. About the McGuigan era, we also need to mention that Noel played bass on a couple of tracks. The tracking sheet for Slide Away shows that Noel re-recorded the bass on that track and he also played bass on Up in the Sky. The producer stated that they all wished that Wixi could have just got it right, but it was a tricky one with timing and he carried the main riff, so it really had to be perfect. McGuigan quit in 1999 and pretty much ended his music career, though he occasionally performs as a DJ. He declined to appear in the 2004 Definitely Maybe DVD and he also declined to be interviewed for the 2016 Oasis Supersonic documentary, though archive footage of him was used. On the next record, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants, bass duties were taken over by Noel and sound engineer Paul Stacey was recruited to play bass on four tracks. Noel must have liked this guy a lot, because there's even a little bass solo on Who Feels Love. On Gas Panic, the bass also brings in a little movement, hitting on the higher part of the neck, pretty unusual for Oasis. On Go Let It Out, it's Noel again. The little bass lick is the melodic element that gives the dreamy feeling to the verse. In the most peculiar way, 
from Fucking in the Bushes, a great instrumental track with the Zeppelin flavor. The bass plays a little descending run while the guitar holds the pedal riff. On the same year, Oasis found a permanent replacement, Andy Bell, who played bass on all the records that would follow. Before joining them, Bell was an avid fan of the band and he was also originally a guitar player. At the last minute he had to learn to play bass as well as the entire Oasis catalog before his first Oasis gig. Bell used an unusual Burns Bison bass guitar. While with the band, he regularly made some variety contribution. On Heath and Chemistry, Bell wrote the song Thank You For The Good Times and a quick pip that features a cool bass intro based on Octajump. On Don't Believe The Truth, he wrote Turn Up The Sun and Keep The Dream Alive, which has a few cool bass moves while the guitar pedals on. Following the end of Oasis in 2009, Bell and the other former members formed BDI. Bell changed from playing bass to guitar and the debut album Different Gear Still Speeding contains four songs written by Bell, including the single For Letter Word. The extremely simple style of the bass guitar contributes to the heavy sound of Oasis, which in my opinion is the true element that makes them a memorable band, also adding to the bad boys mystique. And despite their simplicity, these songs are really funny to play, they're perfect to practice basic rhythms and grooves, so I recommend you try learn a few of them. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram.